Prince, back in from Portugal, from the University of Minho, and the regional coordinator for Open Air, but also the um, University of Minho is the partner in Open Air responsible for the support information and for the, the help desk. And uh, I will present some, some services and tools that can help uh, research managers, project coordinators, researchers, and CPs to, to support the the um, Horizon 2020 uh, in mandate implementation. So um, <coughs> uh, I will highlight uh, 10 <laughs> services or tools um, in order to show how, how Open Air can, can help you um, as you are taking part of a Horizon 2020 20 project or a FP7 pro uh, project or other um, funded uh, project that is already linked to, to Open Air. So the first um, generic service is uh, support. So OpenAir is responsible to support, 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 to have materials to support the dissemination of uh, the, um, the mandate, to have materials and services to provide uh, um, useful information, useful guides, uh, different um, types of information. So uh, mainly we um, focus on, on some uh, useful resources, guides. We have a specific guide for the, the Open Access Mandate in Horizon 2020. Some fact sheets that uh, all of you can reuse, disseminated or translated. Um, and also um, some, some inf useful information about copyright issues. Then we have the training, this that we are doing here today, the workshops, but we have also um, some webinars uh, related to different issues of uh, that Open Air is working, but uh, also uh, about the, the pilot, uh, the FP7 pilot, and the, the, um, the Horizon 2020 Open Access mandate, and we have help desk services. Um, so just to highlight quickly some of them, so the guide, very useful guide uh, about the, the Open Access in Horizon 2020 that you can access in the, in the portal. Uh, then the fact sheets, uh, very colored and sexy fact sheets that we have, you can use it, you can just tell us what to, we need to improve, uh, what we need to do uh, more on this, on this area. Um, we have uh, the webinars, so uh, we do the webinars at least uh, two times per year um, and we record and we have all the content available in a specific page, um, different, uh, uh, pressing different issues in open air, but we have at least two that we did this year about the open access to publications in Horizon 2020. And um, we will have uh, in the future, all the content from the workshops, the Open Air 2020 workshops, we will do five workshops, we will have uh, other workshops, we will have one about the legal issues. So, as we did for the previous workshops in the Open Air Plus project, all the content are available, all the presentations, all the recordings of the, the workshops, uh, these are very useful um, training materials that you can use and we will uh, put it in the future for this uh, new set of workshops that we are doing under the Open Air 2020 project. Um, and we have um, a good number of FAQs uh, to, to, to um, explain different uh, issues and target different stakeholders, but if you, have, um, uh, if you still have questions, uh, after all of this support information that we have provided via the Open Air Portal, you can use the, the help desk the system and um, the Open Air experts will, will answer you. Um, but we are not only uh, IT infrastructure, we are a human infrastructure and as the Inga told, uh, previously we have um, uh, a national open access desk in all, um, all the EC um, countries plus five countries and you can contact them directly to to give you support, support information, presentations, different materials. So the second service is um, ready about the compliance uh, and I will present some tools for the, the compliance. 
So um, the first thing to do is, uh, if uh, I'm involved in the project, uh, what I need to deposit and where to deposit, uh, because the, 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 the mandate states that um, uh, the authors, the researchers involved in in funded projects need to deposit the final manuscript or the publisher's PDF into a repository, institutional or uh, thematic repository. Uh, so we provide um, information uh, and uh, useful tools to, to do that. We, we work with um, uh, directories of repositories, data repositories and literature repositories. And we um, have uh, uh, an orphan repository uh, to, to provide a place to deposit for those who don't have uh, appropriate repository. So we have a tool to locate an appropriate repository. It's uh, very easy um, to find uh, in the portal a repository. You just uh, go to the participate menu and you can search for the, for the repository. You can type uh, the name of your institution, the university or research center. And if the repository, uh, if we have the, this repository in the open air portal, we will identify this repository for you and you can um, just um, use the information that we are providing in the portal to contact the repository manager or to access the repository and deposit it, the, the publication. Um, but you can also use the open air data providers list where you can find the information about the the, the, the data providers, the repositories that are um, compatible with, uh, with OpenAir. The third um, service is Zenodo. So for those who don't have an appropriate institutional or thematic repository, you can use Zenodo to deposit uh, your publications and also data. And it's very easy. It's, uh, it's easy to use uh, repository and easy to um, identify the, the project information in the, in the metadata record. So this is uh, what, what I would like to also to highlight from the, the, the services that you can provide. So a knowledge project funded in the bibliographic record is um, um, stated in the, in, the, in the mandate, in the Rising 2020 mandate, so uh, we need to provide the tools to simplify uh, that. So, so using the example of the node, uh, it's very easy to, when you are um, depositing the publication, it's very easy to identify the, the grant and to, to just to select and to search for the, the, the chronicle or the number of the project and just add that information to the, to the record. And also in other repositories, uh, institutional and national repositories, um, that are using the, the open air um, uh, project list and easily they can um, the, the author or the person that is depositing the publications can easily identify the, the project uh, when the, they are depositing the, the, the publication. So uh, all these repositories use the, the open air um, project the, the project list that we can embed it in the, in the repositories to um, simplify uh, the life to the authors that are depositing and complying with the, the Horizon 2020 policy. Um, if um, uh, and uh, if uh, we, you, do, you don't have uh, the, the appropriate repository, if you are um, not using the and not depositing in repositories, you must do it. But uh, as an alternative, uh, OpenAir have a, a claiming service that you can use to link a publication to a project, to, to the project information. So it's also very useful, it is the link research results tool uh, that you can use directly via the, the OpenAir portal and it's very easy also to use. In the, under the, the participate uh, menu, you can click in research results and uh, you, just, you just need three steps, identify the, um, the project, so you need to identify the, the funder, the European Commission is this example, and the project, and then uh, you have uh, the possibility to, to, to search for the publications in the open air space, so, so the, the, all the publications uh, that we have in the open air, that they can be 
in open air, but not with the funding information, so you need to provide that. You can search via in open air, via DOI, um, uh, data seed or, or seed. Uh, I give here in this tutorial an example of searching uh, using the uh, University of Minu researcher or, or, or kid. So you just uh, put uh, the, this number and you search and you will uh, see all the, the results here, um, all the publications of this researcher and you just um, click and, uh, and select the publications and um, uh, claim these publications to your uh, project easily. Um, in the future, this claim will be communicated to repository managers to improve the metadata uh, in their uh, repositories. So it's very easy to select publications um, and you, the next step is to, um, and the last step is to um, identify the, the access rights of these publications, uh, saying if the publication is open access, close access restricted or embargoed access. So you just need to set the access rights here. The other tool uh, is um, the, the, the project page. So all uh, in, the, in the Open Air portal, all the, the funded projects have a specific page. It's a very useful um, uh, page. Um, so uh, the, the idea you can search for the project and you can access uh, to the specific page. So uh, we have lots of different types of information, data, publications, people, organizations, but we have specific uh, tab for uh, projects. So you can search. I'm searching in this demo uh, the project switch box. You just search and you can access the specific page of this um, project is a FT7 project. So you have some minimal information about the project. If the project has a special cost of line in FT7 and if uh, they have a mandate or a 2020 or another mandate from a national funder. Um, and then you have an APP box, very useful, where you can uh, view all the publications, you can export for the reports, you can embed it in uh, the project website um, where you can copy two different documents as we are showing here. So in this project uh, page we have all the publications, we have some tools to, um, to export the publications and to embed in, in um, personal pages, uh, project pages, different, uh, um, different uh, um, functionalities. And it's also important that you can also check the publications that um, uh, this project uh, have identified. And here I'm showing that Switchbox project uh, have um, 60 publications in the air that come from more than 10 universities. This is uh, the good thing uh, that we have in the air. So we collect information from different data providers, the, the, the data providers that are working on, on open air. On, on the project and we um, gather all this information. So, um, the next uh, service is uh, if you can find or see this pub the, the, your publications in this project list, you just can use the service that I already presented, the, the link in the research results tool, you can claim. So, the, the tool is useful in different moments, but this is where the tool is uh, uh, more useful. So when you just check the publication list, and these publications are not in my publication, in the list of my project, so I, I need to claim it, and you can use this service. Um, all this information, all this publication list, in the, um, you use it in the project, um, uh, are used use it in the EC services. Uh, I want to highlight two, so the CORDIS website, so each project has a, a page in CORDIS, all the publications are listed in the CORDIS website via, via OpenAir service, and um, uh, in the EC participant portal, um, uh, we will have 
very soon the uh, uh, reporting tool to um, to use automatically uh, the list of the open air in, in the in the in the reporting. So uh, this is a better version of the the EC participant portal where we have a tab specific for publications and um, the open air um, publications are listed there and you can reuse this just automatically to a very easy way to report these outputs from your project to the to the periodic report and go to the final report. To finish, uh, with all this information, we have um, a portal with lots of content, lots of publications. This is a screenshot from the last update, so we have a high number of publications. So we have a discovery in the uh, tool, so you can search the information. And as we have all this process of cleaning, transforming inference that uh, Inga also referred when she presented open air, we can um, uh, have also statistics um, and some uh, information for the project coordinators and for project officer and NCP can uh, monitor and check uh, some results of um, the, the project. So some statistics per project, statistics per funder. Maybe two, two questions, questions about open services, short ones. And otherwise, it's after to noon when we have the breakout sessions. We do have, of course, time to ask us questions about this. Okay, hello. No, because then it's not recorded, sorry. Just um, uh, an advice. Um, I'm from the University of Leuven and we continue to have to tell people about um, what is open air, why it's useful, how it works, what is done. And I wonder whether from Horizon 2020 of the ERC and the mail that are repeatedly being sent to the researchers saying that be aware, you have an open access obligation, be aware, do this, do this. I wonder whether the information about open air is not in the mail. Because all people have no clue whatsoever what open air is and how it relates to Horizon 2020 to ERC funding unless he and research administrators tell them. Uh, yeah. Um, I don't know, Caroline, if you can. Yeah. <laughs> can you say something about that? Um, You mean then is that a researcher are not aware? But no, they are not. They are not aware of the services yeah. they can offer them. If the European Commission in their letters don't tell them that that's the place where they can go for support. Um. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure if we you you, you ask us to. to to raise awareness about the services, yeah, but, but I can offer some. Uh, but, but, um, but maybe uh, we are supported by the European Commission, mm -hmm. yeah. funded by yeah. the European Commission mm -hmm. to support the uh, Horizon 2020 mm -hmm. um, open access policy. Um, and so the question is, when there are mails sent out to the researchers, why can't they be pointed to that? Okay, so I, I take into the account so it's a remark. And Maybe, Maybe we have to make an effort, effort about uh, the yeah. award authorities. So. Okay. I just can add that uh, uh, OpenAir and the European Networking and the National Open Access Test are doing uh, their job. So we are contacting the project coordinators, we are sending emails, we are trying to deliver all this information, we are doing presentations in lots of um, local institutions. But of course, it will be very useful if we. If we if we have a, a letter from the Commission, or by default, the open air is referred in, in the communication with the project coordinators. You can give an, an example that. Well, okay, I can hear the reaction from the CP that this is the case, that this happens. Great to hear that. I'm going to go to the risk of the Commission here. Uh, so, sorry, but you raise the topic on the war programs, open air is mentioned. And if it's not mentioned clearly inside the text, it's mentioned in the footnotes on the bottom. So, 
my point of view as an ATP here, it's not really a problem of communication, it's a problem of listening. And we have been making a lot of information days about this. We have been communicating a lot and still professors wonder what the heck is going on. So here the problem is on both sides. We can always communicate more, but it's not by communicating more that we can force the researcher to listen. And on that note, thank you, Pedro. Let's go to Pablo to talk about the FP7 post-grant pilot.